17 different variants of xenomorphs that appeared in alien movies explained in detail. What's the first thing that comes to your mind when one talks about Sir Ridley Scott's 1979 sci-fi horror flick? Alien? No points for guessing, it's the xenomorph. And there's no denying that these endoparasitoid extraterrestrial species might just be the most iconic movie creatures to ever have existed. Of course, full credit should go to the Swiss surrealist and artist H.R. Giger for coming up with such a spectacularly nightmarish design for the xenomorph. Mind you, throughout this 42-year-old science fiction saga, these creatures have boasted new avatars in literally every film in the Alien movie series each terrifying and creepier than the previous. In today's video, we are going to explain in detail 17 different variants of xenomorphs that have appeared in the Alien franchise. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Big Chap, Alien, 1979. Meet the one who started it all, the original xenomorph who's more popularly known as the Big Chap. You will be quite surprised to know that this variant of the xenomorph roughly has about four minutes of the screen time throughout the whole movie. In fact, you only see it for the first time when you are already about an hour into the film. It's pretty hard to disregard its first appearance when it attacks Samuel Brett, one of the engineers, inside a landing leg compartment, puncturing his skull with a head bite and then disappearing into the ventilation ducts along with the body. To those of you who are wondering what a head bite is, well, it is considered to be the alien's signature method of killing prey. The creatures use their inner jaws to pierce through the victim's skull, fatally destroying the brain with a force which is just unthinkable. This particular xenomorph is accountable for wiping out all but one of the Nostromo's crew just within a span of a few hours, and was eventually killed by warrant officer Ellen Ripley, who blasted the creature away into the depths of space. H.R. Giger made plenty of conceptual paintings of the creature before settling on the final design. Made out of plasticine and fused with pieces we bet you would never think of, such as vertebrae from snakes and cooling tubes from a Rolls Royce, the creature sports a tail with a small barb-like tip. Giger had Italian special effects artist Carlo Rambaldi helping him out especially with the creature's head. The final head actually had close to 900 moving parts and points of articulation. Even a real human skull was used as the face that was hidden under the sleek, shining head cover. The overall slimy appearance of the alien was achieved using generous amounts of KY jelly. Also, a latex costume was especially made for the 6 foot 10 inch Nigerian visual artist and actor Balaji Badejo, who brought Big Chap to life on screen. It's even reported that the late actor took Tai Chi and mime classes in order to make the moves of the alien look more realistic. But having said that, even though Badejo was given credit as the main alien actor, there were scenes that demanded the creature to be played by stuntmen Eddie Powell and Roy Scammell. Coming back to this particular variant of the xenomorph, the fact that Giger suggested, or rather insisted on the creature not having eyes, gave it all the more unwelcoming appearance of a hostile and passive beast. Also, director Ridley Scott deliberately chose not to have the full creature on display, only parts of it, to augment the prevailing sense of dread and suspense. No wonder the American Film Institute ranked this monster as the 14th best villain in American film history in their list of the 100 greatest heroes and villains. It goes without saying that Big Chap truly stands apart from literally all of its future versions, and it is precisely this terrifying creature that popularized the movie tagline, In space, no one can hear you scream. Facehugger, Alien, 1979. Staying true to its name, this variant of the xenomorph has squid-like suckers, which will literally hug your face to death. The facehugger hatches from an alien egg and has eight long finger-like legs that let it move very swiftly and a long tail to reach greater heights. It is more like a parasitoid whose only purpose in life is to come into contact with a host, especially their mouth. Here, it could begin the implantation process, wrapping its legs around the victim's head and hooking its tail around the neck of the host. Upon contact, the face hugger administers some kind of sinus based paralytic, leaving the host comatose, and then inserts an ovipositor down the throat of the host to place the embryo. The creature breathes for the host, and any attempts to get rid of the face hugger can prove quite fatal to them, with the creature responding by tightening its grip around their neck. Also, if you think you could simply cut off its finger like legs, you will witness the spurting out 
of acidic blood, and believe us, you don't want to do that. Even the grip on the face is tight enough that if one tries to forcibly rip it off, there's a high chance that the whole face of the host might just tear apart. Only after the alien embryo is implanted and secured will the face hugger detach itself, crawl away, and die eventually. The victim, on the other hand, will wake up normally with no idea of the implantation. These creatures are quite cunning. They are known to ambush their victims at rather favorable moments. For example, when the victim is sidetracked, alone, or unaided. The face hugger also possesses a certain ability to measure how much acid is needed to melt through the helmets to reach the target's face without causing the victim any kind of physical harm. H.R. Giger went through many designs in various sizes before deciding on the final version, which was a small creature, beige in color, boasting skeletal hand-like legs and a long spine-like tail. Giger initially wanted the facehugger to cling onto the helmet of the victim, but Scott eventually concluded that the impact would be much greater if the creature was revealed after the helmet was removed. It was Dan O'Bannon who designed the facehugger prop all by himself, with Ron Cobb adding the technical elements of the muscular structure in the bones. Also, for the scene where the dead facehugger is examined by science officer Ash, Scott used parts of fish and shellfish to make the internal organs of the body look all the more real. Queen, Aliens, 1986 the biggest and also the meanest of all the xenomorphs, the queen, is massive with a daunting physical presence. She is the only one who lays the eggs that later on become xenomorphs. She is even at the top of the xeno food chain, something that makes her all the more frightening and difficult to be dealt with. Introduced in James Cameron's 1986 sci-fi action flick, Aliens, the mama is seen exceedingly protective of her nest, tremendously intelligent and dreadly powerful. During the early phases of the Hadley's Hope Xenomorph infestation, one of the very first creatures to emerge from the early hosts evolved into a queen and eventually built a hive within the colony's atmospheric processing plant. After she had completely grown, she started to lay her own eggs, sending her drones to bring in the captive colonists to the hive to act as hosts. The queen is roughly about 15 feet tall and has two pairs of arms, one larger than the other. Her head has this massive carapace which looks more like a crown. Her external mouth is distinctly segmented from the rest of her head, and there are high heel protrusions from her feet. Let's also not forget the immense ovipositor attached to her lower torso. This unquestionable leader on LV-426 met her death at the hands of Ellen Ripley after the latter ejected her through an airlock into space. While the original alien flick left the origin of the eggs ambiguous, director James Cameron had things worked out in his favor, introducing the colossal alien queen to the audience, one that not only laid eggs, but also acted as the very source of their life cycle. Cameron even went to the extent of designing the queen himself, collaborating with special effects creator Stan Winston, the end result being a 14-foot puppet made out of lightweight polyurethane foam. There were two people who sat inside and controlled the arms. The legs were managed by the rods that were connected at the ankles, and there was a separate person who moved the tail around with a fishing line. The head was a mix of servo motors and hydraulics that was managed by at least four people. No wonder the movie won an Oscar for visual effects. Smart Aliens, Alien Resurrection, 1997 the smart aliens, more popularly known as the clone xenomorphs, are a modified strain of the xenomorph XX121 created in the top secret scientific research ship, the USM Auriga, in the year 2381. Boasting a height of 7 feet, these creatures first appeared in the fourth installment of the alien franchise, Jean-Pierre Jeunet's 1997 Alien Resurrection. Following the events on Fiorina Fury 161, blood samples of the deceased Ellen Ripley were taken from the planet and used as a part of an ambitious program to replicate her in the hopes that the embryo of the Xenomorph Queen had been growing inside her at the time of her death. After years of experimentation and seven failed attempts leading to grotesque results, the program seemingly succeeded and the Queen embryo was harvested aboard the USM Auriga. The clone xenomorphs were artificially created through means of genetic engineering, but unbeknownst to the scientists, the DNA of the xenomorphs and Ellen Ripley became mixed in the process, thereby giving both the Ripley clone and the queen aberrant characteristics and skills, things which were eventually passed on by the queen to her children. 
Coming back to these aliens, they do look quite similar to the regular human spawn xenomorph drones, though thanks to their contaminated DNA, they feature some rather striking differences too. For starters, they appear more insect-like because of their glossy green colored skin and they have much fleshier necks, something that makes their roar far superior to that of the regular aliens. Their bodies maintain a partially quadrupedal posture and they are exceptional swimmers thanks to their tails, consisting of a flat ridge of spines at the base of the blades. Unlike the regular xenomorphs, the smart aliens are remarkably capable of breeding at high speed. No wonder Auriga eventually is overwhelmed by them. Battering down steel doors, ripping apart metal grates and floors all with just their hands, spitting acid purposely on the victims' faces to blind them, and even dodging bullets and fire, these creatures are quite something. Still wondering why they are addressed as smart aliens? Well, they are vicious and highly intelligent. They actually possess problem solving skills. Remember the scene where they were able to escape their containment cells simply by killing one of their own and making use of their acidic blood to burn through the enclosures? Well, their ability to grasp things almost immediately and even set traps for their victims is absolutely remarkable. Belly Bursters, Alien vs Predator Requiem, 2007. Greg and Colin Strauss, more popularly known as the Brothers Strauss, were the team behind Aliens vs Predator Requiem, which not only marked their directorial debut in the year 2007, but also added a dreadful new creature to the overall franchise. Yes, we are talking about the Belly Bursters, which in reality are a cluster of xenomorph infants bursting from the victim's abdomen. The implanting method seems similar to that of a facehugger, but in this case, it is the Predalion that is impregnating the host, and pregnant human women are the chosen victims. The Predalion literally forces a bunch of embryonic xenomorphs down the victim's throat, using its mandibles, and let's not forget that deadly tongue. Wondering why pregnant woman? The implied reason is quite simple. Baby xenomorphs growing inside can feed on the unborn child, while simultaneously drawing nutrients from the body of the host by attaching themselves to several main organs. But it is also quite possible that the Predalion, upon seeing a pregnant belly, considered it a much more effectual way of giving birth to aliens. The implantation process and what follows later is an awful sight. Imagine witnessing a multitude of larvae erupting from the victim's belly. This variant of the xenomorph is without a doubt the highlight of the whole movie, and this scene in particular is categorically not for the faint of heart. Xenomorph Aliens 1986 Thanks to James Cameron's sequel to the original Alien flick, the creature featured finally got a name and a little bit of a makeover too. The Xenomorph featured in the 1986 movie is a lot more advanced than the one Ridley Scott introduced us to. This variant is tough, resembling a soldier, and we get to see plenty of them in this particular movie. Boasting a height close to 8 feet, it is usually black in color, has a textured head along with a much harder head carapace, its long segmented tail featuring a stinger-like barb with a bladed tip, and the secondary set of jaws inside the mouth just cannot be taken lightly. From being able to camouflage itself in the hive, to effortlessly breaking down metal pressure doors, it's deadly even in death, thanks to the ability to drench its enemies with acidic blood. As such, if killed by any form of weapon, the creature is bound to explode and as a result, flood the whole area with its molecular acid. So you can imagine the impact of such a blast. It goes without saying that these variants are also quite intelligent. After all, they are not only capable of planning, but also adapting to different circumstances. For instance, the only reason they cut the power in a certain section was to allow themselves access to their human prey. Remember Private First Class William L. Hudson's line? What do you mean they cut the power? How could they cut the power, man? They're animals. They cut the power. What do you mean they cut the power? How could they cut the power, man? They're animals! You just cannot disregard the fact that they somehow did manage to learn how to operate the machinery even if their knowledge was only basic. Finding faults in their enemies' defenses to exploit and managing to creep up on their prey even when they are on guard and fully alert, these variants exhibit extreme uses of hostility and aggression, ambushing literally anything non-xenomorphic that crosses their path. Ah! 
Neomorph Alien Covenant 2017 The newest addition to the Alien franchise is the pale white Neomorph that made its first appearance in the 2017 movie Alien Covenant, which is not only the third installment directed by Ridley Scott, but also the sixth installment in the Alien movie series. It would not be wrong at all to confess that this particular variant of the Xenomorph simply takes the level of creepy notches higher, giving an all-new definition to the meaning of the word. The embryonic Neomorph actually gestates inside the living host until it decides to rupture out of its host's back and throat amongst other areas using its sharp and pointed head. The Neomorphs are insatiable carnivores often found devouring corpses of their victims and can grow at a very fast rate. In fact, they are able to fully develop just within a span of a few hours. While they are small and four-footed during their juvenile phase, they will eventually transform into large, bipedal creatures after reaching full maturity. The Neomorphs do not have an extendable inner jaw, instead they have gums that spread out. Just like the Xenomorphs, the Neomorph also flaunts a tail, but the latter is tipped with spikes and is strong enough to actually tear off a human jaw. It would be a cardinal sin not to mention those vicious silvery fangs and its brutally aggressive nature. Also, each Neomorph differs slightly from the other. Remember the one with the bony dorsal spikes on the back? It's pretty hard to forget. Many of you might not know this, but the whole physiology of the Neomorph was inspired by the Goblin Shark, and director Ridley Scott still likes to address this particular variant as the first generation of the aliens. After all, the term Neo does mean new and young. The Neomorph is impressive. The sole fact that it can run straight at its victims' faces sets it quite apart from the other variants. You actually have to experience the scene yourself and mark our words. It is quite unsettling. Dog Alien slash Ox Alien, Alien 3, 1992. The Dog Alien or Ox Alien, mainly addressed as the Dragon, marked its presence in the third installment of the Alien movie franchise, David Fincher's Alien 3. The flick takes quite the plunge, delving into an unfamiliar territory and showcasing what happens when a facehugger takes an animal as its host. When the Dog Alien is in its chestburster stage, it almost looks like the miniature version of the adult. After growing to full size, it is chiefly quadrupedal, has digitigrade hind legs, and is quite prone to using its mouth to maul its prey to death. There's no denying that this variant is the fastest of the breeds, thus creating a perfect sense of terror. To top it all off, now imagine this creature spitting acid from its mouth and reaching a height of around 7 feet 5 inches while standing on its hind legs. Frightful, right? Do not miss out on this creature, one that is capable of traveling not just on floors, but walls and ceilings too. Predalion, Alien vs Predator Requiem 2007 No points for guessing that this variation is the result of a facehugger impregnating a predator. Although a Predalion chestburster is seen in its first appearance in the last scene of Paul W.S. Anderson's 2004 flick Alien vs Predator, the first time the adult can be seen is the subsequent 2007 movie Alien vs Predator Requiem. The Predalion is irrefutably one of the high points of the whole movie, showcasing several traits similar to those of its host. We are particularly referencing the dreadlocks, mandibles, skin tone, and a long, thick, multi-spike blades tail. The Predalion on display here is a young queen that will specifically go after pregnant women, inserting literally hordes of belly bursters into the victim's throats. The manner it does so is in a way quite similar to a facehugger impregnating a host, but it is definitely not a pretty sight, especially with a Predalion using its mandibles and forcing up to five embryos embryonic xenomorphs down the victim's throat via its inner jaw proboscis-like tube. Boasting immense strength, the Predalion is quite large and bulky in size and can easily break through solid concrete. This means it's way tougher than its host as witnessed by its ability to hold down, shove, and simply overpower a predator with ease. The Predalion truly is a horrifying hybrid. In fact, it would not be wrong to call it an abomination. Trilobite, Prometheus 2012. This colossal cross between a squid and a facehugger came into existence after Charlie Holloway was infected with chemical A03959X.91-15, colloquially known as the black goo or the black liquid. Holloway proceeded to indulge in a sexual activity with Elizabeth Shaw, resulting in an alien rapidly growing inside her body. You're pregnant. Although Shaw had the creature surgically removed and it was presumed to be dead, it actually ended up not only surviving, but also evolving into a gigantic xenomorph facehugger whose only purpose was to find and impregnate a host. Unlike a facehugger, the trilobite had quite the ability to grow, which was clear right from when it was surgically extracted from Shaw's womb. 
A creature so huge is strong enough to overpower an engineer. It even possessed numerous large tentacles along with smaller retractable tendrils to hold its victim steady while violently and forcibly implanting alien embryos in the body. Right in the middle of the creature's body is a huge tooth mouth, inside which was a giant feeding tube that was mainly used to inseminate the host. It is this endoparasitoid larva the trilobite implants which will eventually evolve into the deacon, though the trilobite itself dies after the impregnation. Fifield Mutation, Prometheus 2012. So if one gets ambushed by a hammerpede first and then gets infected with a black goo or let's say falls right on their face into a puddle of the black liquid, that person will eventually turn into a monstrous mutated monster. Well, this is precisely what happened to geologist Sean Fifield in Ridley Scott's Prometheus, and although his character did make use of his utility knife to cut off the head of the hammerpede, he ended up getting his helmet sprayed with acid. The resultant skull-faced xenomorph is impeccably hard to kill, boasts superhuman strength and outstanding leaping skills. Fifield's mutation initially led him to survive not only being run over, but also being shot right in the head. He was ultimately destroyed by a flamethrower shot and crushed to death by the armored personnel carrier, also known as the RT series group transport. Many of you might not know this, but the original mutation was supposed to look quite different to the end result that the movie has on display. The monster was supposed to have a translucent cowl covering its extended head. Even John Spate's initial script, which was actually titled Alien Engineers, featured a rather more extreme version of Fifield, sporting additional dorsal tubes emerging from his suit and big claw talons sprouting from his hands. Terrifying enough? Deacon, Prometheus 2012. The Deacon is the result of a trilobite attacking and impregnating an engineer. This xenomorph-like creature features a blue smooth body, four fingers, a thumb, plantigrade legs, and a mouth with two different sets of teeth. While the upper jaw has teeth similar to herbivores, the lower and the inner jaw have a relatively smaller number of sharp, vicious fangs. The lower jaw even extends outwards, something that looks like a second set of gum. But unlike the xenomorphs, the Deacon is devoid of a tail and instead has an elongated head, which is quite sharp and pointed. This variant is also reported to be born fully developed as an adult, and the fact that it aggressively bursts from the chest of the engineer shows its prominent similarity to the xenomorph. What makes the Deacon remarkably different from the rest is the manner in which it uses the sharp back of its head to literally tear its way out of its host and the way it actually roars. Also, the fact that the host is already dead even before the creature is born highlights its ominous presence. This chillingly pointy-headed creature was specifically named after a bishop's hat. Hey, baby. Oh, oh, ah, ah, you're strong. Hammerpede, Prometheus 2012. This extraterrestrial creature was the result mainly of several indigenous worms of LV-223 coming into contact with the black goo and ultimately mutating into serpent-like creatures with winged bodies. Hammerpedes are shown to have rather pale white-gray skin that looks somewhat translucent and they can grow up to a height of four feet. Their crests will remind you of snakes, especially the cobra, and they can be folded in and out around the mouth. Flaunting an unbelievable amount of strength and possessing acidic blood, these creatures are also quite capable of regenerating severed parts of their body within a matter of a few seconds. Remember the scene where Fifield tried to cut off the head of the hammerpede? Well, we all know how that turned out. Also, you will be quite surprised to know that a similar kind of insect actually exists in real life. The creature is carnivorous, feeding on other worms, slugs, and insects. It is called a hammerhead worm and is, in fact, very much capable of regenerating its severed body parts in a span of a few weeks. It can even create an entirely new head and body when it's cut in half. Newborn, Alien Resurrection, 1997. Do not make the mistake of judging this variant by its seemingly harmless name. It might act like a child, but beware of its fatal intentions. Due to some major genetic meddling that occurred when scientists were trying to recover DNA from the deceased Ellen Ripley and the alien queen inside her, clone aliens were born, which exhibited minor human characteristics. As a result, the clone queen ends up giving birth to a human xenomorph hybrid.
the newborn appears much larger, boasting pale translucent skin, an elongated head, a skull-shaped face with eyes, a nose, a human tongue, and no tail. There are many who address the newborn as one of the strongest aliens to have appeared in the Alien franchise. Remember the scene where it fails to bond with its queen mother, and so it ends up decapitating her with just a single swipe? For a variant that is just born to display such strength is both impressive and terrifying. Later, it is seen imprinting on the Ripley clone, even licking her as a gesture of affection. Too bad that it eventually got brutally sucked into space through a tiny hole, a feat which we have Ripley 8 to thank for. Baby Xenomorph, Alien Covenant 2017. This variant is the baby version of the fully grown alien. Virtually identical to the Xenomorph XX121, this version possesses similar features including the bipedal humanoid stance, elongated cylindrical skull, a rather smooth domed carapace, and a segmented blade tipped tail. Formed as a result of eggs that were created by the android David, the baby is seen recreating the popular chestburster scene exploding from Christopher Oram's chest in Ridley Scott's Alien Covenant. Emerging, the creature undergoes an instant transformation, and thanks to the species enhanced growth, it is fully developed right after being born. It is actually pretty hard to disregard the baby xenomorph screeching in front of an enchanted David following its birth, and you have to experience the scene yourself to understand the gravity of the particular act of display. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.